Chief Minister, Madame la Vice-Présidente, Monsieur le Président, Monsieur le Représentant de l'Ambassade de France à Londres, Monsieur le Directeur et Monsieur Jean-Baptiste Hugo, Ladies and Gentlemen, nos, nos invités, nous sommes ravis de vous accueillir à Candy Gardens aujourd'hui. C'est un grand privilège. Votre présence pour cette commémoration exceptionnelle symbolise les liens ancestraux et étroits entre notre voyage et la France, et plus spécialement la Normandie. Ladies and gentlemen, 100 years ago, all the speeches on this site were in French. But today, I will continue my welcome in English. <laughs> welcome to you all to this very special commemoration of the inauguration of the statue set here in this absolutely beautiful location where Victor Hugo himself must have walked many times, contemplating the sea and the sky and looking towards his beloved France, which was so near as we see today, and yet for him so far. On this spot, his statue was erected with great pride and much ceremony as we have heard 100 years ago. It was a ceremony the likes of which Guernsey has never seen before or since. Many dignitaries were gathered here from France, England and Guernsey, and they were watched by a huge crowd. It was only 29 years after Victor Hugo's death, and there were many people present who'd known the great poet during his exile in this island. They were the people who welcomed him so warmly to our shores to the place where he lived for some 15 years or so of the happiest years of his life, and where he wrote some of his greatest works, some of the greatest literary works that have ever been written. Present here were representatives of the French and United Kingdom governments. Significantly, His Majesty the King of England was represented by his Lieutenant Governor, who accepted the statue on behalf of the King as a gift from the French government. He, in turn, gave it to my predecessor, Bailiff William Carey, on behalf of the people of Guernsey, describing it as he did as a souvenir of the great poet and an indestructible proof of the friendship of France. Also present were leading figures from the Victor Hugo Society, the Académie Française and the world of French literature who paid homage in glowing terms to the contribution that he had made to the world of literature, poetry, and the theater. They acknowledged the love that he had for his adopted island and the inspiration that he found here. Victor Hugo famously headed the Toilers of the Sea with the words, I consecrate this book to that rock of hospitality and liberty, to that corner of our old Norman country, where lived the noble science of the seas, to the Isle of Guernsey, both sweet and forbidding, my present home, my probable grave. In the spirit of the Entente Cordiale, Victor Hugo personified the links between France and England, symbolized by his presence here in Guernsey, which he described as a fragment of France, fallen in the sea and gathered up by England. In addition to the members of the governments of the two countries who were present on that day, officers of the French Navy and the Royal Navy had marched together side by side from the Royal Court to Candy Gardens, another symbol of what the Lieutenant Governor described as the friendship which so happily exists between France and England, the growth of which, he said, we see with the greatest satisfaction. With the benefit of hindsight, it is significant that the two governments participated in such a public manifestation of the Entente Cordiale here at Candy Gardens. On that day, 100 years ago, they did not know, but history tells us that within four weeks, both countries were to declare war on Germany and the First World War was to commence. 100 years later, and in a more peaceful context, the friendship between Guernsey and France, and in particular with Normandy, is stronger than ever. 
Victor Hugo continues to be revered as one of the greatest literary geniuses in France, in England, and throughout the world, but most particularly here in Guernsey, the source of so much of his inspiration. We will always remember him. He will always be one of our most distinguished and famous residents. And in a moment, his descendant, Jean-Baptiste Hugo, will unveil the restored statue. It's appropriate that Jean-Baptiste's father, a young man of 18 years of age, was present here at the ceremony 100 years ago. On behalf of the people of Guernsey, I repeat the pledge of Bailiff William Carey given on that day, when he promised to care for the statue, to keep it in the same condition as when handed to us, to conserve among ourselves the memory of a genius whom France has had the honour to count among her sons and to whom the island was able to offer shelter in the full vigour of his life and at the zenith of his mental powers. Thank you.